is Analog Spectrum. There are thousands of podcasts out there and you settled on this one. What's wrong with you? All right, this is Analog Spectrum. I'm here. This is Tony. I'm here with Doug. Tick and... tock, tick tock. <laughs> Time's clicking, baby. All right, and we're uh, we're gonna. Uh, I don't know. We're going to talk about some stuff today. Let's talk about movies today. Let's talk about movies. movies. I like movies. Uh, yeah. yeah, we uh, we're going to go all. This is another one of those days. We're actually back in the same room, which uh, yeah, which you can probably hear the difference if you've listened to any of the previous. So yeah, and I you know we we were talking before we even started. Uh, uh, I kind of prefer the whole in room thing, but eh, shit works. Whatever. Yeah. Yep. You got to do what you got to do sometimes. Right. How you been doing? Ah, uh, busy, busy, busy. Came down with a little cold. You know, just typical life, life, whatever. I know. Spent a fortune on cabinets for the house. Are you Are you COVID positive? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't tested. I don't even care. Whatever. How uh, How uh, How long has it been going on for? Oh, what is this like? All of a sudden, I'm in. Oh shit! You know what? Honestly, I just kicked into that mode. I can't help myself. I know. I can tell. I can tell. Um, So anyway, yeah, whatever. I'm I'm almost over it. Nice. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) So, uh, so today, like I mentioned, we're going to talk about some movies. Uh, uh, Doug and I did a. did a movie trade again and i and if you remember from the coast guard podcast i i brought up the movie cinderella liberty i asked doug to Which watch that one i had not seen right and he asked me to watch uh, roger dodger uh and roger dodger i think was 2000 and i can't remember uh two i think two yeah or three early or 2000s or late 90s God, yeah. and again i haven't done a whole lot of research on this one i did watch it and and it while it was somewhat familiar to me i'm pretty sure i hadn't seen it okay Cool. Yeah, That's so, good. I'm glad. Yeah. And so uh, so uh, just some uh, background about the two. Uh, Cinderella Liberty uh, takes place in, and now again, that one's in like 1973 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think 70, yeah, 72, 73. Yeah, yeah, yeah. starring James Caan and Marsha Mason and uh, some other people. And it's about a sailor in Seattle who uh, who basically ends up kind of in a limbo state because of issues with orders and, and et cetera. Mm. And Roger Dodger is about, a, a take, again, takes place in the early 2000s. And mm. it's about a guy who, uh, New York city, New yeah. York city. Yep. And yeah. he, and he's, uh, and he's with his, uh, and that's, I forget the actor's first name. His last name was Campbell. Mm. Uh, I go, well, it ain't Glenn. I can't it's remember. Not Glenn, <laughs> it's not Scott. I don't think it's Scott, but anyway, good actor. Uh, and he's with Jesse Eisenberg, I believe is the other, which is plays his nephew. And it's just one night in New York where, where, uh, one individual, the older uncle is teaching the younger nephew on the, uh, the idiosyncrasies and the, the uh, steps necessary to seduce women. Hmm. So, and, uh, and he considers himself quite the player. Yes. All right. So which one do you want to start with? I, you pick, man. I'm, I'm okay with either one. Let's start with Roger Dodger. Okay. Let's start with it. Okay. So, uh, and, and because I was the individual who hadn't seen it, hmm. uh, the movie itself kind of reminded me quite a bit of, of, uh, of our days when we were, uh, we were kind of leaning hard into independent film. And yes. I had, I had that exact same kind of retrospective, uh, nostalgic kind of feeling when I watched it. Because you and I, for a while, were, were heavy into IFC. We watched yes. a lot of that. So. Big time. Yeah. And uh, while you're talking, uh, I'm just going to kind of bring it up on my phone so that way I can... I can, uh, you're so modern. I can't help it. I just want to make sure I don't want to mispronounce people's names and yeah, stuff like so that. I, I, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's funny because I typed Roger Dodger in, yeah. and uh, the next word that behind it was uh, was uh, hedonistic. Anyway, oh, <laughs> so no, I'm sorry. The actor's name was Campbell Scott. Campbell I apologize, Scott. Yeah. Mr. Scott. And Je- and it is Jesse, Be- Jesse, uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. And uh, a little bit more detail in the movie. It kind of starts out that, and his and his name is Roger, hence the name Roger Dodger. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it starts out where he has formed a relate uh, a a kind of a. Uh, uh, what's a a boy toy type of relationship with his that, boss. Yeah, yeah, and and it's uh, it's on the down low. Yeah. And, yeah. and she's a, they work at an ad agency and she owns the agency and he's a copywriter. Yes, he writes. So he's very much the, um, I don't know, boy toy. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, well, he's, he's got a gift for the gab, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Very and, charming. Yeah. Charming, uh, very handsome, but cynical as the yeah. day is long. 
and uh, and they have kind of a falling out at the beginning of the movie, and he comes out of that basically on fire and guns a blazing. Yes, and and Jesse Eisenberg, who I believe was uh, is a character named Nick, and he uh, mm. he uh, uh, is. I guess it, well, he he comes there under. He's almost like honestly like the Holden Caulfield character in Catcher in the Rye. Mm. Uh, he comes to New York uh, under the uh, you know under the guise, which is a lie, that he's there to to go to check uh, out a college, check out yeah NYU or something, yeah. and uh, and really he's just wanting to to uh, get away from his his small town. Uh, Ohio, Ohio, yeah. Ohio. He's a kid from and, Ohio. So, yeah. he, and he kind of knows that his his uncle is is a player, and he mm. wants to be educated. Now, again, he's very naive, mm. you know. And so, so right as right as uh, uh, Rogers, uh, you know, uh, physical existence with his boss Joyce kind of goes on this downslide. He and he's coming out of that pissed and angry, and in comes Nick, and he says, "Hey, teach me how to seduce women." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "All right." Let's do this. You asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> and and for, that's kind of maybe the first 10 or 15 minutes of the movie. Right. And uh, and off it goes, right? Yeah. They, so, they take the plunge. Yeah. And so I, and and they end up in a bar and uh, and in that bar is, uh, oh man, can I, again, can, uh, Elizabeth Berkeley is one of the actresses and the other actress, I can't remember her name, mm. uh, but they they find these two women. These two women are, are also kind of just out for a, a good time. Yeah. They're bar flies, kind of yeah. club flies. It, and this is kind of where we get into that whole, in, well, also in the very beginning, we talked about how it had that independent, independent uh, film vibe that we, uh, that we enjoyed back when we were starting this, you know, or starting that kind of uh, going down that path with her. And, uh, uh, there was that opening scene where Roger was talking about the importance of men in society and how... Uh, that's one of my all-time favorite... I guess you could call it a monologue. Yeah. Uh, that's one of my all-time favorite little discussions. Yeah. Um, because it's so poignant and it's so... It's almost like it's stripped raw truth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's stuff that people don't talk about. It's all the layers of politeness have been removed. And uh, well, that's what he did. Yeah, that's that what was his, that awesome. was his. Yeah, that, that was his gift. Yeah. That was, well, and and uh, and uh, just to kind of just to kind of. I'm sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> This just COVID. <laughs> your, your, your COVID has tuberculosis. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I was a minor in my former life. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> but COVID, histoplasmosis, and tuberculosis. This is all yeah. coming together. Whatever, dude. Whatever. I don't care. That's so okay. Good. It's good knowing you. We need lungs. We need lungs. <laughs> Remember, Doug used to be a smoker. Yes. So, uh, but. Uh, uh, no, the, the, that conversation. And so in the, in the, uh, in the restaurant, there, it's just him and a bunch of his coworkers and they're all, they're all, all the dialogue is very sharp. I don't know who the script writers were for this, but they just have, they, I'm good, sure, yeah. yeah, they were good. Mm. And, uh, and, and so even like the witty retort that a lot of the, that is, uh, working companions had was, was still pretty yeah, sharp. Was, yeah. And, uh, and so he was just going down this list of like, you know, uh, men can read maps. Men can pick up heavy shit. And when all this, when, when uh, and now they've come up with technology. And of course, this is bullshit. But he was like, come up with technology uh, where women won't even need sperm to reproduce anymore. And then once they can read maps or come up with technology to read maps, which we pretty much have that now, yeah. uh, uh, pick up heavy shit and and reproduce. Men will become obsolete. Will be useless. Yeah. Yes, and so uh, and and uh, so that was kind of his whole that, that like that defined him as a character because yeah. that is, that gives you his reasoning why he was the way he was. Right. So his in his mind, his advice to all men is don't stop lifting heavy shit. Right. You know, don't stop reading maps. Be, you know, lean into the yes male. A traditional male role as hard as you can because you know before long we're going to lose it so. right which and, I thought was interesting yeah and of course what he strips out of that is is uh, love and affection you yes. know what I mean none yes. of that's important to yes. him you yes. know he yes. doesn't he, he questions the existence of the higher power God and love you know yes. that doesn't exist in his world right. you know if it isn't for the actual physical act of of having sex then 
yeah, why nothing do we else, do it? Nothing else matters. He, he even notes that. I mean, yeah. he, well, he even said in there once to Nick at some point, you know, he, he summarized his job as, you know, he has to make people feel bad so they'll buy stuff. Exactly. Well, that's what and, I was going to say. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, again, it's like kind of like Mad Men. Do you ever watch Mad Men? I watched the first season. Yeah. It was, yeah. You have going downhill after that. But, um, but yeah. So it was, he had a similar attitude. Right. Which I thought was. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so, I mean, how far in this do you want to go? How you want to Let's tell keep the going. whole world? Okay, uh, go. I'm just going to ask, like, how much time? plot do you want to give away? Uh, oh, do we want a spoiler alert this mm, thing? Mm. Uh, 2002, get over it, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. So, uh, like, especially with Cinderella Liberty, I do not care, yeah, right? Okay. But, uh, for this one anyway, uh, but... Uh, no, so they end up in the bar. You know, you know, he he has the falling out with uh, with Joyce. They, they, uh, and and he he finds out it's it's worse than just a falling out because he he ends up being a bit of a of a dick when he's leaving Joyce and Joyce. Mm. Is, oh no, no, he goes to work and he has a uh a, a blow up kind of a mi- minor blow up with her there. Yeah, I found and, out that he wasn't invited to her party. Yeah, and he got pissed, so he confronted her in the office and and she yeah. basically said, "Watch your step." I'm still in charge. Like she reestablished, you know, the fact that she's in charge. Right. And, and that he was, he was overstepping, yeah. you know? And, uh, and so they go to the bar, meet these women and, you know, Nick is there, the, the, the nephew and, uh, and they come up with, and he, and he's just, he's just like, you know, trial by fire for Nick. Oh, he, big time. Yeah. yeah. He's just dropping him right in the middle of it. Right. And, and, uh, and, and, and chat. And every time he has the opportunity, he's, he's, uh, He's beating him down when he mm. when he feels like he screws up, but mm. but ultimately at the bar, uh, Nick does better by showing his softer side to the women. Mm. Mm. Like he makes some sort of oh I know what he you know what he I thought about this. There's a you know uh, Chris Rock and somebody brought this up the other day. Chris Rock does this uh, joke where he talks about when you go out on a first date with somebody, uh, you don't go out on a date with them. You go out with their representative. Yes. Right. Yes. And and that's kind of what Nick gets into in, in a little bit uh, in a different way. He says, you know, uh, he was really looking for a relationship where where uh, once you have the two individuals completely unvarnished, that you're still you're still in love. Yeah. You're still connected. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so still... he exposed himself in this very very uh, vulnerable and naive sensibility about you know traditional uh, sensibilities about love and relationships and stuff. And these girls are. Barflies. I mean, they're tainted. They 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 think a lot like Roger does. Yes. Um, they're and, playing the game. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was really refreshing to them to hear this this kid, you know. But I thought it was funny. Roger goes. He, he leaves him at a table. They kind of this is kids. What is he? Sixteen or something? Right. They, so he takes him to kind of a hidden away booth in the back where the the bouncers can't see him and stuff. And uh, Roger goes up to get drinks, and um, this chick walks over. And she says, oh, yeah, I think that's your uncle over there. And he told me that you had something to say to me that would yes. totally blow my mind. Right, <laughs> right. And Nick just looks like, what the <laughs> shit? What am I supposed <laughs> to say to this guy? You know, again, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. You know, beautiful New York City satellite. And uh, Yeah, and it's, and it's funny. Uh, and I, I may say that I want, I want to make sure I say this. And if I if, if I don't say it now, I'll, I'll forget to say it later. Definitely a movie that can't get made today. Oh, yeah. 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 A but, thousand uh, times over. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so Nick drops that whole thing, very well written, very well said by uh, mm. by the actor, by uh, Jesse Eisenberg, where, you know, these women just kind of melt, you know, and uh, and you tell Roger's like, what the fuck, you know, yeah. you know, but but it's it's funny when things, you know, because they're, they're, he's trying to also teach Nick to be a wingman and to be wingmen for each other. And, and he he pivots off that and mm. uses it. And, you know, basically, he, he's not too worried about his own. Again, the goal being to get laid, right? Right. And uh, and so he pivots off that, and uh, you know, and they go outside, and he and it, and of course the women, they, they this 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 was never going to go anywhere, yeah. right? Right. And uh, because interestingly, and uh, likable characters versus non likable characters, and all that kind of stuff is way more nuanced than that, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so these women, while they were. Like Roger, they're not going to have sex with a sixteen-year-old kid. They're just—I right. they, don't think they were from the very beginning. Yeah. They just wanted to see how far this would yeah. go, and uh, and so. Uh, uh, but Nick, Nick is totally fine. He's a mm. he, he's a dog. That guy, mm-hmm. uh, not Nick. I'm sorry, Roger. Roger yeah. yeah, he's a dog. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, so yeah, you know he he ends up uh, they end up not not you know something. There uh, 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 events transpire. 
they don't end up uh, with the women and they and then we get into, enter into the third act where uh because Roger's uh, 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 still upset about the whole thing that transpired with Joyce, he crashes the party. Doesn't go well. Does not go well. Yeah, and uh, and and he brings Nick. He does bring Nick. Yeah. Well, he two things are happening. One, yeah. he wants to basically uh, uh, just I, I don't know dump gasoline on the already burning fire that is Joyce the yeah. relationship with Joyce. Yeah, it could be. And and he uh, and he doesn't. You know, uh, this is a um, an individual. That does not care what people think, and he's going to say what he wants yeah. to say. He is uh, cocky is a good word for this guy because he's confident and then some. Right, like he is a hundred percent sure that his viewpoint is accurate. Yes, yeah, and and there is you cannot talk him out of it. Right, right, so, and then you know, and it goes with the relationships, of course, and he's warped. Right, uh, which I loved about that character. But. Right, but he uh, he ends up uh, you know again at Joyce's uh, uh, Joyce's party. Two things kind of happen there. One, uh, there, you know, he, you know, and and, and it's interesting because the advice that he gives, as far as like, like, uh, hey, this is how you can end up, you know, having sex with a woman tonight. You know, if you're dealing with an individual that is has like no moral compass, they would his his advice would yeah, work. He's but, right on. Yeah. yeah but but uh, but Nick's not that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not that guy. He wants to be that guy or thinks he wants to be that guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, but and, and we'll kind of get to this when we talk about the end. Uh, you know, till he till he's in it, he's like because what ends up happening? Uh, uh, Rogers like, hey, go after this woman. She's really really drunk. You can make it happen. And then they go back into a bedroom. She passes out, and uh, Nick doesn't do anything. Mm. And then uh, Roger goes and does says a bunch of stuff to Joyce, which clearly is going to end him being yeah. fired. Gets, gets him thrown out of yeah, the party. Yeah, gets him thrown out of the party and probably fired from his job. And she's like, you know, and she handles it pretty well. And by the way, that character was played by Isabella Rossellini, which was it's fabulous. Yeah, she's she great. was just so good in that. Yeah, movie. she I, really I, was. She was really good. And uh, yeah, she owned it. I mean, yeah, yeah and. Uh, and anyway, so they leave, uh, you know, things, you know. He, yeah, they're going to go home. Yeah. And, and, then, and then Nick says. Well, oh, that's right. Nick he, says, wait a minute. You said something about a fail safe. Mm. And, uh, oh, I forgot about this. Yeah. And Roger's like, um, blah, what the hell? Okay. Yes. So he takes him to a whorehouse, basically. And this, uh-huh. oh my God, the filming of that was so good. Man. It, it just made me skin crawl. It it's felt, so creepy, man. I, I just wonder if uh, <laughs> if those kinds of places, I'm sure they exist. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah, but yeah. this was... Uh, it was skanky. It, it was, was skanky. so... Yeah. yeah, it was very not yeah. anything I would... So. But anyway, of course, Nick is, you know holds true to his character and... Says no thanks. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I forgot about the last yeah, part. Yeah. yeah. So he, he gets in there with a girl and she's super um, direct. Yeah. Aggressive. Know? Yeah. Okay. You gave me 50 bucks here. Take your pants off. Let's go. And, right. And, you know, of course, Nick is being a romantic. He's looking for at least a discussion or something. He gets right. nothing. And he's like, he's flabbergasted. And he did great. Uh, what's his name? He Jesse did, Iceberg. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. He did really good yeah. in that. Right. Uh, but anyway, so they bail out of that and, and go home. Right. And uh, anyway, kind of, you know, a few other things happen, but he ends up back in Ohio. It, uh, Nick finds out that he lied about the college and and uh, call your mom. He ends up back in Ohio. And the the movie kind of ends with uh, with Roger showing up at his high school and just giving. It, Hanging he, yeah. He's so, hanging with so, the students. Yeah. 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 So Nick is, is sitting at the stereotypical nerd table. Right. With all the Dungeons and Dragons kids. And, uh, totally. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. And, uh, and they all pick out this one girl that, that they think is the most amazing, you know? And then of course, Roger and his very New York slick discussion. Right. Is giving them girl advice, you know? Right. So uh, anyway, I'll let you tell the rest. No, it kind of ends with that, and and and, uh, and same thing happens that happened in the bar. Uh, they're all sitting around, and of course, all this, and uh, and we always talk about the hero's journey. There's there's two individuals that are on the hero's journey in this, mm-hmm. you know, where you have Roger and you have Nick that are that, uh, and and of the two, the one that changed the most probably was Roger because he learned them because because interestingly, you know, Nick went to uh, to New York to learn from Roger, but Roger probably learned more from Nick. You know, mm. basically broadened his scope. Mm. Neither one of them completed it, you know, mm. uh, but uh, but you know, Nick held to who he was. But anyway, uh, so he's giving. Uh, Roger's giving them advice on women, and of course, Nick is sitting there just kind of quiet. 
the I love the nerds because they're oh, they they are oh, they're so stereotypical. I mean, oh I went to God. high school with those kids. Man. Yeah, they're kind of like it was you so know, perfect. Yeah, they they were saying stuff that's like you know, oh, who's the hottest girl? Who who's the girl you guys I want to talk to around here? And the kids are like, oh, Susie for sure. Oh yeah, Susie. Right. And and they're like, oh, if I only had Susie's panties or whatever. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, like, and they were sticking their tongues out. Oh, God. Like, I'm so freaking retarded. Oh, they and they were saying that stuff. You know, they're 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 like you know, uh, yeah, totally saying stuff that was. Uh, was on on par with what we would have said when we were sixteen, yeah. and so so uh, and I can't remember the the character's name, but let's say it was Susie. Yeah. Uh, Roger says, "Okay, well that's all I have to say to you guys. I gotta and go. I gotta yeah. go." He leaves, and all of a sudden Susie walks up and uh, and says to uh, says to Nick, uh, "Somebody that came out, you know, said that yeah, you you would have the uh, you could." Yeah, it's say, to say, say to me. Say like, something to totally blow, blow my, my mind. mind. Yeah, and uh, and boom, uh, the, yeah. the movie ends. Nick, Nick st- he opens his mouth to answer. And then freeze frame. Yeah, in, the, movie in the movie ends. Yeah. yeah, so uh, so that's how it ended. Now, I, like a, like I said, what I liked about this movie, uh, it was a very. Yeah, I was I was listening to. Uh, uh, oh, I was listening to one of the, my my favorite podcasters, and I don't think he's. This is unique to him, but he was talking about the one of the issues with movies nowadays is that they there was a time when they made exceedingly low budget movies let's say you know around a million mm-hmm. very very high budget movies you know kind of temple movies mm-hmm. and these medium movies right these movies that maybe cost 20 to 30 million to make mm-hmm. and uh, and right now we live in a society where those movies are not getting made anymore right. and that's to our detriment right yes. and this is this fits that yeah this, i agree with that yeah this movie mm-hmm. is it, that's a problem that we have and uh uh, so, uh, and, and also movies like this don't get made now because, uh, they're, and, and this did not pre- present any, they didn't present women in a negative way, didn't present men mm-hmm. in a negative yeah, way. It was pretty These balanced. Are, yeah. yeah, very balanced, very, you know, but, but I, I can see if this got made today, you know, Roger would be completely oh, made a villain. Yeah, yeah. A total villain. Totally, yeah. But, but he did have uh, some redeeming qualities. Mm. He clearly liked Nick. He clearly wanted to, he felt like what he was doing was helping Nick. Mm. Uh, but again, I felt that, uh, that, you know, there were, you know, there were, the, he, you know, the, there was this initial initial dynamic of of uh, Roger was the 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 mentor, Nick was the student, and that got all fucked up. Mm, mm. And uh, and I like that, you know. And uh, and overall, yeah, I mean, I I thought it was a, a really good movie, you know. So so it was it was uh, again in that place where there was a series of movies that came out like Sex Lies and Videotape and mm-hmm. all those movies that came out in the 80s and 90s that were just uh, very relationship focused just good stories mm-hmm. uh, and all that kind of stuff and uh, they just don't get made anymore so. yeah no I think you, you said the magic word for me uh, and nuanced and that's yeah. one of the things I really liked about this because there were there were multiple stories and multiple character arcs happening outside of these two as well right uh, you know, the Joyce character was, there was some evolving happening with her because she was all for um, Roger being her boy toy for a while. And then all of a sudden it's like, nah, we got to stop this. And right. And then uh, towards the end of the movie, she had another one. So it's kind of like she's bouncing around and it just shows that she, she's not perfect. She's human. You know, she's got flaws and all that. Right. So I enjoyed that part. But um, the layer of, or I should say layers of of psychology that's built into his philosophy and the way that story was told is the part that I like the most because you he's he's the guy that you have uh, you admire him from a distance right because he's a successful New York advertising guy mm-hmm. when you get closer you hate him because he's a scumbag right but then when you get below that he's actually a pretty nice guy right and so it's 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 multi dimensional character right. And, and and again, back to today's movies, I don't see that in many characters in today's no. movies. They're so flat and, and two dimensional. It's like, ugh. well, Roger himself, I mean, uh, super smart, mm. you know, but broken. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and well, uh, cracked at least. Yes, right? yeah. And Nick, yes. Nick helped weld that crack a little bit right. by reminding him of the things that are important. And I guess you know, if that story was to extend and keep going, Roger would probably go back and be a better ad copy guy because he would have a different perspective with the same right kind of skills that he had but able to write copy for other things because his whole mantra was make people feel bad so they buy shit you know to to fix their problem right 
Was that in that movie? This movie? I know I've seen a recent movie where somebody said to a character where, you know, you're broken. And then the response was, well, you're not broken. You're just damaged. I can't remember what that Hmm. was. Anyway, there's a movie I watched recently and and it's now it's stuck in my head, but it wasn't this one, was it? Okay. Okay. No, no, they didn't say that. No, no. But yeah, so my my thing was that he was was willing to accept change. Yeah. You know, so. That was great. Yeah, so, so you liked it. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. good. So cool. Tell me about Cinderella Liberty. Um, Cinderella, Cinderella Liberty. I had quite a few thoughts on this actually. Um, I just watched it this morning. Okay, because I fell behind on my homework. No worries. Okay, so just a, real quick before we get too far into it again, okay. 19, 1973 ish. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and uh, and it's about a uh, <laughs> about a sailor, Navy sailor, right? Yeah, played by. James Caan. James Caan, greatest guy ever. <laughs> that guy was. He was a great actor as well as like. You know, just a, a good tough guy, stud. He was a stud. He was, yeah. yeah. And uh, and so he's on a ship. He's a boatswain mate. Uh, first class BM. Yeah, first class BM on a on a uh, uh, on a ship that pulls into Seattle. He's got a uh, he's got a medical issue, polynidal cyst. Mm-hmm. Comes off the ship, and uh, his his ship leaves without him. Yeah, because he can't get his test results back in time. To see that it's safe to get underway, so they yeah. they keep him at shore side. Yeah, and they're like, "Don't worry, another ship will come along," and mm-hmm. uh, and and we'll probably drill down on this a little bit more. But uh, because because he's at the at the and the reason it's called Cinderella Liberty is Cinderella Liberty means you have to be back to the base at, at midnight. Midnight, yep. And so because he's a patient, the, the, the first night he goes out, they give him Cinderella Liberty, mm-hmm. and uh, he ends up uh, meeting. Uh, another bar fly maybe a maybe a bit of a prostitute i would say and mm-hmm. uh and he ends up forming a relationship with her and her son in seattle and and this is kind of what transpires over i would probably say right around nine months or a mm-hmm. year or so yeah. because they lose his his, his his records his records and that's one of the reasons i wanted you to watch it because we doug and i during our coast guard uh podcast talk a lot about how the coast guard ran on paper mm-hmm. and how also individuals can get lost in the system mm. and that's exactly what happens to this yeah. individual and not only not only uh, does he get lost he he loses his pay he becomes kind of a non-person within yeah. the, within the navy pretty much invisible yeah yep and uh uh and you just kind of watch it kind of move forward uh as, as his relationship kind of develops with this individual so yeah. with a with a really cool ending yeah, you liked the ending. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was good. So, um, all right. So, my thoughts first of all is, um, it was very flashbacky for me, and, yep. and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I was just telling somebody at work the other day, I had this experience. We went to New Orleans, um, and there was four of us from work, and uh, we didn't have a vehicle. We didn't we didn't bother renting a car. We stayed at a hotel right by the convention center, so we just walked back and forth. So in the evenings, there's nothing to do. What do you do? You walk around, right? So uh, we walk down to Jackson Square, and we walk around here, walk around there, find a place to eat. And all this, like, wandering around, checking out a new city, reminded me of that's what we used to do in the Coast Guard. You pull in somewhere Mm -hmm. to some foreign port somewhere. You may or may not speak the language. Could be Mexico, could be Colombia, could be wherever. Right. And you damn sure want to get off the ship. So you go wandering around, and you find interesting things to do or people to talk to or whatever. And so that's kind of what he did when he when when they put him on medical hold. Uh, he didn't have anything to do. He didn't shoot, and he had money in his pocket. And so uh, he goes wandering around. And that and that sequence that they put together of him, like he's eating dinner alone, right. he's wandering the streets. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Did he go to a movie or something by himself? Yeah. Oh, he's riding the carnival rides by himself. Right. And that's so like realistic. That is so the way it was. Right. If you had some buddies with you, yeah, you'd do it with them. But ship left, and all my buddies are gone, so I'm just going to do it on my own. Right. So uh, then he wanders. Of course, he wanders into the bar and hustles this chick. Because uh, I like that scene a lot. Yeah, he had to be back by midnight. It was like ten o'clock. And he, he saw this chick in the, in the other side of the bar uh, hustling these dudes playing pool. So he uh, he went and lost a couple games on purpose and then better 50 bucks that he could win. He only, he only better 50 bucks or a nice... Well, she said, I don't have 50 bucks. Yeah. And and she said, and she said I don't have anything worth 50 bucks. And he said, oh, really? Don't you? And so the in, insinuation was there. So, And because she was such a bar fly and a tramp, then she totally agreed. And, of course, right. he whipped her ass and... Uh, Took her back to her place. Yeah, um, and that's where that's where he met the kid. Uh, 
she said, oh, be quiet. My kid's sleeping on the sofa. And she lived in a dingy little oh, one bedroom. Yeah. Squalor almost. You yeah. Know? This movie didn't really hold, didn't hold anything back when it came to mm-hmm. like how, how you talk about Roger Dodger and the, the whorehouse. This one, maybe not that much, but yeah, it wasn't that gritty. No, yeah. no, it wasn't that gritty, but, but, uh, but that was, that was really the way people lived though. A lot of people. Oh, yeah. Like that, you oh, know, because yeah. and, 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 America now is, is, is rich as shit compared to what we were in the 70s. Yeah. I mean, you know, just a basic standard of living. Right. And, and so I think that was pretty common. I thought it was interesting that that uh, that her son, by the way, was uh, was interracial, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and he leaned more towards the fact that he, had, he was black. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, this is based on a book, but maybe that's right. part of the book. But mm-hmm. I thought that was an interesting story choice, that, that, yeah. especially for 1973, that they did that. Well, I think that was that was what I I got uh, a lot of flashbacks from watching after school uh, movies when I was a kid, you know. Right. And um, that that little kid's attitude was very similar to what I grew up with on television. Yeah. As a stereotypical inner city black child. Right. You know, he had all kinds of attitude. He carried a knife. Switchblade. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I forgot what he said. Hands off. Hands <laughs> off, honky. Honky. Hands <laughs> off, honky. I'm going to stick this in your ribs. You know, something, something like that. It was freaking <laughs> funny, he, man. But he was great. The kid, yeah. that kid was a great was awesome. actor. Yeah. yeah he, he was, was a great awesome. actor. Yeah. But I think that, I think that you know, again, it's a stereotype, right? Sure. And it was, it was there to illustrate uh, the difference, the dichotomy between those two characters. Right. But, um, yeah, he was really good. And then uh, I really liked the evolution of... It seems like James Caan's character evolved internally, right? So there was very little external influences on him that, that created an evolution, right? Like right. so in Roger Dodger, his nephew was doing and saying things that, um, that sort of he internalized and, and, and took to heart. I think the way I viewed this is that um, James Conn's character had all of that stuff in him and the opportunity just presented himself or presented itself for him to, to sort of grow into that. Mm-hmm. And what I mean is that he ended up um, marrying this woman and, and I don't know, adopting the kid. I don't know if that's the right word. Right. I mean, he'd be taken care of him anyway. He, cause they didn't have any money. And, right. And, and maybe, maybe to go get into that a little bit. Uh, so it's almost an, it's like a, like the James Conn character and the kid, Doug, uh, Named after Douglas MacArthur, we find out yes, later, which yes, is crazy. So there was some there was some weird dark humor in this yeah. movie, and uh, uh, he seemed to like latch onto Doug only because he was just like this kid is on a bad path. Yeah, yeah. And almost like I guess maybe he saw some of himself in the kid or something, but he didn't, I don't I don't think he cared one way or the other about him being interracial. That didn't, no, that it didn't seem that way. And yeah. I will tell you that's an interesting thing that we talk a little bit about, like you and I. We may have talked about this in a podcast or maybe offline uh, about the Coast Guard. There is this interesting thing how, you know, the military has a tendency to, to, uh, stri- and, and I'm sure if anybody's listening, they may completely disagree, but it has a tendency to kind of strip away a lot of, a lot of kind of racist thoughts because once everybody's wearing blue or green or something like that, you kind of stop worrying too much about a person's, uh, ethnic background well, and so forth. Well, in my experience, it's like when times are really good, there, there's room for that, but right. when the ship catches fire, Nobody cares. I don't care what color you are. Right. I don't care where you came from. Help right. me put this fire out, baby. But, but and so, but that, that, but that's stuff that you don't get in real life for the most part, right? Right. Um, you go to a traffic accident, same thing. Right. Oh, I'm not going to help that guy because he's black. Yeah, right. Bull crap. Right. You help people, you know. Right. So. Right. And, and and so I and I don't know why he thought, <laughs> thought the way he did because uh, because uh, uh, but because he it was clearly a southerner. He played yeah. he played as a guy from the south. Yeah. And. Uh, and uh, but he was but he really latched onto this kid because yeah, he, he just did. he just wanted to bring him you know uh, bring him forward he you know he didn't well, like him the kid but he was drinking and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. Well, I think another important part of his character that they they did a good job of displaying is that he was a he was honest. He didn't swear. He wasn't a stereotypical sailor. That he was, was just a drunken sailor and you know out for his own good. Right, almost to a to a fault. He, mm-hmm. he yeah. was like I I don't swear and I don't lie. <laughs> that was his that was because yeah. he asked him about that yeah and so anyway he he latches to this kid and uh, at first i think he was interested in her and lots of like bad decisions and stuff right uh that everybody makes but he th- then he ends up kind of falling in love with her but it's it kind of goes beyond love because she's pregnant but not by him mm-hmm. that we find that out a little later and he says well you know i want to make sure that she gets the care that she needs mm. and uh 
And uh, so he says, well, you know, I'll marry her because I think I can love her. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then she'll she'll be able to get the the benefits, the the medical benefits of being in the Navy. And and it's funny because this is and and I thought this is pretty freaking authentic, too, is that in the military, especially back then, if you wanted to get married, you had to submit a chit. Yeah, you had to ask for permission. Yeah. Yeah. And he did it without the XO knowing an XO played by Dabby Dabby Coleman, uh, which was kind of cool to see him. Mm -hmm. Uh, He uh he just basically, like, reads him the riot act. Oh, yeah. He rips him up, man. Rips him up and down. But he stood tall. He did. He did. And he stood his ground. He did. And yeah. uh, and and, st- and and he stayed with her. And uh, and also kind of a, a B story or, or a parallel story. Uh, he was also very much wanting to uh, to find his old old drill sergeant, drill sergeant yeah. yeah from boot camp his which old by the way commander. i got this is I, I would i've been dying to tell you this i loved that character eli wallach eli wallach who also played tuco in in uh yeah uh dirty uh good bad ugly. good bad and the ugly who's that's one of my all-time favorite characters yeah i think that guy is a fantastic actor he was great in this in this he was brilliant of course every, i couldn't stop seeing tuco when he was on screen but it was i, I got well it. and and the story behind this individual it, it clear they didn't say why but he had been drummed out of the service for some reason As a matter of fact they made sure when he left uh the uh no they, they told you it was um Oh, he, he something something with a senator's kid in yes, boot camp. Yes, and and it was a failed senator even. And, yes, and they still drummed his ass out. I guess he had just left boot camp or something. Or yeah. as a, as a company yeah, commander, they, it was a little. It was uh, a little vague, but yeah. At the end of the day, it was political. Basically, is what they, what they were telling. You. Exactly, and when he left, you know, he was a a BMC or BM uh, BM one or something like that. Mm-hmm. Also, a boat's a mate, and uh, but you saw when he got on the bus, he didn't have any stripes on. He had his, yeah. he had his a uh, his is uh his oh shit sounds a service stripes but, service stripes but, but no no yeah. uh no no yeah, ranking. I noticed that. yeah which was again pretty a lot of authentic authentic stuff yeah. but uh but james Conn really wanted to find this guy so he could beat the shit out of him because yeah. he had made him stand uh at 17 below and yeah, yeah guard a garbage or something yeah, yeah. Guard, a, guard a garbage can <laughs> 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 and, so, and he pissed his pants and almost froze to death uh and, but i tell you the other part that of that that was authentic was that when I first came in, I think we talked about this during the early one of our earlier Coast Guard episodes. Right. It was still very much macho men type shit going uh-huh. on. And a lot of guys became friends after they had a fight. This right. is this is I don't know. I guess that establishes their machismo or something, but yeah. uh, that's what these two guys that you know, James Conn clocked him and right. they had a big argument and the chief kinda like made him shake hands, which was a great handshake, by oh, the way. Yeah. The, it was like the they master, barely even touched each other. It was yeah, like, yeah. The okay, ma- this handshake. The master at arms was another oh, he guy. was awesome. Yeah, he yeah. was great. And that was the guy from Roger Rabbit. Uh what's his not, name? No, not Roger Rabbit. He was the guy from Rocky. He was, he was, uh, it wasn't. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, the trainer. Uh, yes. What's his name? Yeah. Oh, uh, um, Polly. He played Polly. Polly, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, the, uh, but so that, that happened a lot when I was, when I was first in the military. And I went in in 1983. So it was like 15 years after this. Right. And, um, uh, yeah, Burt, Burt Young's the actor's name that played, uh, played Polly, been the master of arms. Okay. And Eli Wallach. Yeah. Every, everywhere he would go, the main character, uh, John Baggs. Uh, everywhere he would go, the boat's mate, he would say, does anybody know Lynn, uh, Lynn Forche? Does, yeah. does anybody know yeah. Lynn Forche? He kept like, looking for him, yeah, for cause, years. Because he just wanted to punch him in the face. Yeah. And he was a BM1, so yeah. that you, you imagine he's been in probably in 12, yeah, yeah. 14 years, yeah, right, least, or something yeah. like that. And uh, finally finds him at the hospital and punches him in the face, and they yeah. become friends. And then they become friends, yeah. Yeah, and so then, but, but they lose, but again... That whole thing about the the uh, military running on paper, they lose his record. They have to go. Doug talked about microfish. They had to, they had to contact DC re uh, reprint everything yeah, from recre- the microfish. Yeah, recreate. It's going to take months, months, yeah. months of you know because yeah. he's going to take. What am I supposed to do? And what am I supposed to do about pay? And he was they just freaking forgot about this guy, yeah. right? And uh, and so uh, so he ends up in, and then then finds out she's pregnant. Uh, he still forms a, f- a friendship with Forche, and we kind of watch things transpire over several months as as he marries the uh, uh, the the character uh, Maggie, marries Maggie, and uh, uh, and she goes through childbirth. Go through and yeah, goes through childbirth. The baby's premature, yeah. and uh, and the baby dies at, at post birth, right? And uh, she decompensates. Right. 
Right. She she suddenly is like her, you know. Yeah, she, she, was, she falls down a big spiral. She does, because she thinks yeah. basically life, and, and, and definitely she had some pathology, some, some yeah. psychiatric pathology. And, uh, and she thought, well, but now I've married this Navy guy who, by the way, he's not, he's selling stuff. He, he's not getting paid. He's using yeah. Navy, Navy, uh, whatever yeah. you call mutual assistance. Yeah. And he's sneaking into the dental, dental clinic and convincing people to work on the kids' teeth and stuff yeah. behind the scenes. And yeah, which is great, you know, and, uh, which I thought was an awesome scene. Yeah. Too, that was fantastic. Way. Yeah. Uh, and he's stroking the dude's ego just so he would do it. You know? Yeah. And so this, and, and by the way, the dentist didn't do it. He got the corpsman to do yeah, it. Yeah. The corpsman. Yeah. Which was for, cause back yeah. then they have dental techs. And yeah. the, he's like, oh, does he need root canals? I can't do a root canal. I can't root canal. Like, this get a book. technical stuff. Yeah, get a book. You read about it. You'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, you we'll do be great. back tomorrow. <laughs> and so, uh, and so uh, but it ends up happening. Maggie goes down the, 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 goes down the hole. And then one day he comes, comes to her apartment and she's bailed. Yeah. She's, well, he came back. He came back to, to tell her that he finally got a ship. They found his record behind right. the filing cabinet. They, right. What I thought was also great, very realistic. They moved the filing cabinet to buff the floor. Oh yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> and so this is exactly what you do in the military. You can't leave the part that's under the filing cabinet unbuffed. You have to move it, right? So you can clean. You know, anyway. A big so they, back on what we talked yeah. about with the waxing floor. That is, a, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Very this authentic. Is exactly what they yeah. do. Anyway, so they found his record and they and they got him assigned to a ship. That he was going to be heading off to a Westpac, uh, Western Pacific Patrol, six month patrol. Right. And so he went to the apartment to to say to her, like, "Hey, it's all going to be good. They found my record. I got a thousand fourteen hundred dollars. What back pay? Yeah. Um, and she was gone. Yeah, she'd bailed. She'd mm-hmm. gone back to New Orleans. Yeah, with with a dude that she met at the club that earlier night. And and she left her son. Yep. And his capable hands. Now, all of a sudden, he's in the pickle, right? Because, oh, shit, I got the kid that he really liked him. He, like, genuinely he, liked this well, kid. I, I, and and I, I wanted to, to mention this also, is there were scenes in there that I was kind of like, okay, I get what they're trying to do here, but it's a little bit hokey. But, you know, like, they're hanging around in Seattle with the kid, and they're riding bikes together and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I thought that was a little sitcom you know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but one thing about that, though, is they were all over Seattle. And, uh, and as most people know, I lived in Seattle and I, when, when I told you to watch this movie, I had forgotten that, that this took place right. in Seattle, but there's scenes of Rainier, scenes of them on the ferry. Yep. There's one scene, that scene where they're riding the bike. If anybody hasn't seen this, any of my friends watching this in Seattle, there's a scene of, of them riding their bikes by gas works. Yeah. It's before, a little montage. Yeah. yeah. But riding it by gas works before gas works is now a, a city park. Right. But before it was a city park and you're just like, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, it's all dumpy and stuff. Yeah. Lots of. Lots of gritty Seattle footage, which yep. I loved. Before I could, it was gentrified. Yes, yeah. and all mm. that. You know, yep. it was great. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, there's actually there uh, when I when I lived there. I don't know if it's gone now, but there was actually uh, a couple strip clubs in the downtown area, and they were grandfathered in. Oh, like I see. like they passed laws, no more strip clubs in the downtown area. Right. But there was, I'm sure it was first that going down through uh, down, and the viaduct is still there clearly, mm. which mm. is gone now, and uh, that. That road was like nothing mm. but strip clubs and, and dives yeah. and whatnot. So I know that's where that was. And here's, was the, here's the funny part. When he was walking down those 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 strips, you yeah. know, with all of that, I could have been anywhere. Like I've oh, seen yeah. that. I've seen that in in, uh, in San Diego when I first started right. going to San Diego. Damn sure in L.A. Right. All kinds of foreign countries that I've been in. It's the same thing. Line it all up and and let the boys come and drink right. and spend all their money, man. And and, and, and Forche had who had been drummed out is in there and he's one of those guys out in the front. He was a caller. Yeah, yeah he's out there in like the the, the doorman outfit and yeah. he's kind of semi proud of this thing with like stains all over it, yeah. trying to get uh, GIs and sailors in there to to go to, to the come show and spend their money. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, Greatest show on earth. Nothing yeah. like you've ever seen before. Come on in, guys. You I know. know and, thing, it, yeah. and it looked a lot like, you know, like my ideas of like like 1970s Times Square kind of yeah, thing, too. Yeah. And anyway, that was blew me away. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, blew me away. But uh, but so he, off he goes to, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, Maggie leaves, and there he is with, uh, with Doug. And he's like, what the hell am I going to do? And so what he does, and... He, and the 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 different type of military it was uh, Forche never wanted to leave the service and you, this kind of happens behind the scenes you don't really realize that this is happening because Doug is you know in this and Doug the character itself again very deep character this mm-hmm. kid right and he's and, resourceful he he says he says well you know now that he realizes mom's gone and uh and, and Bags came back and told him you know he got a ship and he's going to be off to Westpac 
And kid's like, well, I'm just going to hitch, hitch my way to California. I'll just jump a train and, right. hit, you know, he's very independent. Was he 11 years old or something? Something like something that. Like that yeah. yeah. And and I think both of them loved each other and they hated the idea that they loved each other. Yeah. They were like, oh my God, I can't believe I've, I've fallen. This is my father figure. And, right. and thank God I, he's in my life, but I cannot stand it. Right. You know? So he goes down to the pier to, uh, to, uh. Well, James Conn told him, right? He said, look, I'm, I'm taking off. He gave him some money. Go yeah. get yourself a hamburger or something, right? He said, if I'm not here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, come down to Pier 5. Meet, right. me, meet me there. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll also say, also, for anybody listening to this also about the Seattle thing, is I was like, there there is no Navy in the in Seattle. Mm. There is, there's Bremerton, which mm. is, sits across the water. But I didn't realize this, for anybody listening, uh, Magnuson, which is a park there, mm. was, a, was a Navy base. Was a Navy base. Now, I don't think that they had ships in and out. I think they definitely took certain liberties, but but Magnuson was an air station mm. and mm. Uh, it's since closed. But but this looked a lot like Bremerton. Right. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and all the scenes of them, like the, the gate guard and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Gosh, that was a yeah, flashback all the way, all, man. All so much. And so, uh, uh, so uh, Doug goes down there. Sees if you know he's looking all over, waiting people, through the crowd. Yeah, people yeah. are pushing him away. Get away from me, kid! Yeah, all, the, all the sailors are lined up, checking in. Here's right. my name, Joe and, Blow. I'm you know boss mate, third right. class. Okay, and, come on board. And they're at the quarter deck. And also one thing about that: Do you remember when Bags got off the boat? He saluted the quarter deck and saluted salute the, uh, uh-huh. the, the 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 ensign. Yep. And I told Melly, "Yeah, that's a thing." Oh yeah, and, and you know what struck me is I remember having to teach new guys when they came on board. You salute the ensign first and the ensign last. Right. And I, I don't know why that struck me, but yeah. they did it correctly. He did it right. Yeah, yeah he did it. Correctly. And and so you so the so Doug is standing at the pier uh, at the quarter deck, and and there's a there's a uh, uh, the jo or the officer of the deck is standing there, and he's he's uh, checking in all the new officer guys, of the day. Yeah. Sorry, and yeah, he's checking in all the new guys, and uh, <laughs> and he hears and Doug hears. Okay, bags, and then you hear the voice. And bags, first class, bosa mate, yeah. checking in, sir. Request permission to come aboard. Yeah, and it's four shake. And it's Forche's voice, and it's, you know, it's Tuco, man. I like it. you can't disguise that voice. Yeah, uh, so yeah. So, and so then, and it, then, that's the reveal. That's the big reveal, right? And all of a sudden, and so the kid's like, "Holy crap, what happened?" You know, and all of a sudden here because he didn't know Forche. I mean, no. this kid just heard the name, and he's like, "That's not him." Yeah, and, yeah, then, and then, then, then all of a sudden here comes James Conn. He's dressed in civvies, yeah. and he's like. Uh, He's like, all right, you know, yeah. you know, and he worked it out. He basically gave Porsche his his uh, position on the boat because Porsche wanted to stay in the, yep. the Navy and him and change your name and off you go. And then they alluded to the fact they're headed to New Orleans to find Maggie. Yeah. So yeah. and that's yeah. how it ended. Yeah. So, yeah. Full circle story. I think that, again, the, the, the arcs of the characters were good. Mm-hmm. Um, all three of them, because Maggie was almost saved. She was almost you know, right. she she did a really good arc, and then she just crashed and burned when she right. lost the baby. But um, yeah, I think that was a it was a real well told story. Glad you uh, liked it. The cinematography for the time was good. Um, there was no there was no like oh my god, cinematography moments in it no. for me. But uh, definitely tons and tons of nostalgia. Yeah. That's lots, what I was hoping for. Lots of cool stuff, yeah. That when we were talking, and I was like, "That." I know a, you came up with that when we were talking about our last Coast Guard thing. Yeah, I, no, I there when I watched that movie after I entered the Coast Guard. Now that again, time gone. Yeah, that's not the way it is now. No, yeah, no, not and, at and, all. And we caught the tail end of that. We really well, I, did. We did, and I can tell you, I, I had lunch uh, only a few days ago with a guy who's in the Navy now. Yeah, uh, and about to retire, and. Um, and he's done 23 years, I think, something like that. And he uh-huh. said, yeah, man, it's different now than, than when we were in. Because yeah. I've been out for 20 as of this year. I've mm-hmm. been out for 20. Wow. So he, he got in just before I got out. And, uh, you know, you know the changes that we saw while we were in, mm-hmm. it's gone even further. And how does that feel to be out for 20? Uh, well, just whatever. I don't, I don't know. Care. Yeah, I'm not nostalgic in that way. Um, well, I I think about the fact that you just talked to somebody who joined about the time you got out. Yeah, that's yeah. that that would frame it. It's weird. a whole nother lifestyle, a whole nother life that I've lived. Right. You know, since yeah, but but uh, it's a, a lot of nostalgia for somebody like you or me. Plus, there's a good story packed in there too. Yeah, yeah, and and, and you know the. For me, again, it's a movie. It's cool. I don't. I don't put a bunch of weight on it in terms of like, oh, I sure wish it used to be that way. No, screw no. that, man. That scene when she was giving the baby in the hospital, how bad she was sweating. It's because they didn't have air conditioning. Right. It sucked. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just all there is to it. And and you know, there's lots of, lots of 
people that would say like, oh, those were the good old days. Nah, bullshit. They were not the good old days. I think these are the good old days right. in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just keeps getting better. So I'm not one. I, I don't look back and lament like that, you know. Right. Um, but I, it does it does stir memories of, of when we were growing up and the way things were and whatever. And, and I just take it for what it is. Sure. There's things that in that movie that I, that I uh, think were better that I miss, but I completely agree with you in that, uh, uh, that life was also a ton harder back yeah. then. Yeah. Look and, at us right now. Right. I mean, come on, dude. Well, even they were, yeah, no doubt. They were even talking in that movie about how, uh, you know, they were in this one this one bedroom apartment that was this very seedy, you know, kind of in a flop house. And how he was saying, oh, well, you know, that maybe we have options outside welfare, social work. Well, even though he wasn't getting paid, but let's be clear, there's people in the military in the past that lived that way and yeah. they were getting paid. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, so yeah that's that's a reality. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, overall, I, I go back to that movie you know, and I recommend it to anybody that's like, hey, what was it like when you were in the service? Now, to be very, very clear, mm. we caught the tail end of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. And, and just just bits and pieces of it. Right. But yeah. I'd say like my first unit or so, and, and I, I we'll talk about it when we get to our next uh, Coast Guard podcast. When we were in Key West, there were definitely people in Key West oh, yeah. that had, that were like a records lost kind of people. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So. And that doesn't exist anymore. Well, uh, I think that maybe does us. I, I, yeah. I'm no, glad. that was a good trade, man. That was yeah. a good. We've had some, we've, we've sparred a little bit on some of these trades, but I think that was a good trade. I'm glad you liked Roger Dodger. And, and I am glad you yeah. liked Cinderella yeah, Liberty. that was good. Uh, yeah. Well, when I was watching it, I'm, maybe you do the same thing, but I was watching it and I was like, like, like I told you, like the montage scene, uh-huh. I was like, Doug's not going to like that. <laughs> no, I liked it. I think the, the montage scene was, uh, was appropriate for its time. It right. really was. Yeah, it, was. it was. I mean, because when you said that with them riding the bikes, first thing I thought of is Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Same thing. Montage scene. He's riding that stupid bike around and it's like, ugh. but for the time. That's what they had. That was their storytelling devices. You know what I mean? That's that's they had to show you that he was a likable, charming, nice, fun guy. Right. And and they had to show you in this film that he was truly bonding with the kid. Now, right. How else do you do it? Yep. And so that's how you do it. Well, uh, in in the the immortal words of Sis- Siskel and Ebert, uh, two thumbs up. Yeah. For all the movies. Yeah. The movies. We're going to do another movie review where that might not be the case. So anyway. Um, I can guarantee that <laughs> shit. All right. So I'm going to call it there. I think we're going to call it. And, yeah, man. Uh, all right. Again, thank you everybody for listening. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Keep analoging your spectrums. Amen. This has been an Analog Spectrum production and presentation. As always, it means a ton to both me and Doug that you took time to listen to our show. We enjoy making these things, but we get a massive kick out of knowing we have a few friends hearing what we have to say. This is about the fourth outro I've done, so let's keep it short. Please subscribe, share, and if you like what you're hearing, give us a top-notch five-star review. Finally, feel free to email us, Facebook message us, or tweet at us. We love feedback and criticism, as long as it's constructive, and we're always interested in new show ideas. Well, that's all I have for now. The shows will keep coming. I promise you that. Thanks again for hanging out with me and all of us at Analog Spectrum. We'll see you again soon.